Claire, thank you for sitting with us. Um, I know we keep saying this, but you've only had 10 international caps, but you play like you've had over 100. Has the transition to World Cup football been as seamless for you as it has looked from the outside? It's been wonderful. I think experiencing a World Cup really early in my career has probably been the biggest positive I've had. Um, I feel like for me it's been seamless and I enjoy being in this environment. I think I'm made to feel comfortable and I'm you know, valued and feel confident in this environment because I have the backing of my teammates and my coaches. So I feel like for me it has been seamless and I feel comfortable in this environment. Do you have a favourite moment of the tournament so far? The win against Canada was really, really good. We had our backs against the wall, we needed a win and we just came out and, and did what we did. So I think to win 4-0 against a quality side and a side that you know won the Olympic Games not too long ago, so we're happy with that. I think there's been no argument that you were meant to be in this squad, but did you expect to play every single minute in this World Cup? I don't think I ever had an expectation to have as many minutes as I have had this you know time in my career at international level, but now that I am here, I feel confident and the football I'm playing, I, I'm enjoying starting and I feel like I'm doing my job for the team. Can you tell us a little bit about your injuries leading into this and why perhaps your World Cup debut was delayed and then also how you're finding playing back-to-back -back games, are you getting enough recovery? In terms of the injury history, uh, probably dates back to about 2018 and from 2018 to 2023, I had seven surgeries across those five years and that was, you know, four knee operations, an ankle, a shoulder and an arm. So I had, I had everything um, and I think now that I've kind of put that to bed and feel like I know how to manage my body and manage myself during games to not put myself in scenarios where I am getting injured, um, I feel really good about and I feel like that's given me, I suppose, a bit of bit of wisdom, bit of growth, and now that I'm at this level and playing at this level, it's, yeah, it's given me the opportunity to express myself as a footballer. Seven operations at your age, that's pretty incredible. Would you say that's character building? I would say it's character building to the fullest extent. <laughs> I love that. And what's it been like playing again, playing alongside Alana and Polks? What, what have you learnt from them? I think I feel... I feel so comfortable again uh, playing alongside both of them. They offer different attributes and I feel like they complement me quite well and I complement them quite well. So to have the opportunity to play with you know, world-class centre-backs with my first experience with the national team has been really special and something that has made me adjust to this level quite quickly as well. Prior to this World Cup, what would you say is the biggest crowd you've ever played in front of? can't quite remember. I think we had a AFF tournament over in Myanmar that had maybe 25,000, but they're all non-Aussies. So I feel like playing in front of 75,000 Aussies is so different. And it's, I feel like it's an amazing experience. And I feel like I understand the, um, I'm trying to find the word, um, the magnitude of the, I suppose, experience here. So. And so how are you turning these massive crowds into a, a positive for you? Because you just seem so unfazed in everything you do. You're the coolest defender I've ever seen. So how, how are you coping with these massive crowds? I think I just block it out. I don't really think of it too much. I try and focus on the action I have on the park. For me, it's just 11 v 11 on the field and I know that I have to do my job. And regardless of the opponent, I know my strengths and I understand the opposition strengths and weaknesses so I feel like I just try and obviously nullify their strengths and capitalize on their weaknesses and focus on what I can do on the pitch and everything else that's going on outside is going outside but I, I honestly don't notice it so. Let's look ahead to the game on Saturday. Did you watch the game France-Morocco and what has impressed you about France so far? France has been pretty amazing this tournament and the way they play is you know, very clever, very direct football. They have some wonderful players in their team. Um, so I think we understand the individuals in their team that, you know, add such a depth to their squad and we're just focusing on what we can do to capitalise against them when we play them on Sunday. And a few of those players, they've got Diani, who's in form, La Summer, one of the best strikers in the world. And you've now played against some of the top strikers in the world. How do you adjust your game plan to, to sort of nullify big players like that? I think for us as a defensive unit, we obviously analyze the games, we get given uh, insight into what we can do to try and nullify their strengths. And obviously, you know, Lasama is very good at running on the offside shoulder. So we, we know what she 
her off the ball movement is great so we need to work against that and obviously Diani is spectacular so we just try and obviously uh, work against what they're capable of and stay as a defensive unit so Obviously, uh, the Matildas and this World Cup have inspired hundreds, if not millions, of young boys and girls across the country. Now, you are from a regional town, I believe Grenfell, is that right? Which is close to Cowra, where Early Carpenter was also. How powerful is this for regional areas to see players like yourself on, on the stage and showing that you can make it from wherever you are? Yeah, I think for me it's really, really special to represent such a small community and small town and to grow up there for the first, you know, 17, 18 years of my life. I feel really grateful that I got to be a part of that community and also now represent that community on a world stage. Um, I feel extremely lucky, yeah, and I, I'm glad that I can be someone that young boys and girls can look up to from regional areas, from, from wherever they come from and know that it's possible to, to make it on the big stage. You've been part of the A-League women's most recently. Um, a lot of these players are also looking abroad, potentially to the WSL. Is that something like that on the cards for you soon after this tournament? I think this tournament has showed me that, that I want to progress my football and I feel like for me that is looking like an overseas move. So I'll make a decision after the World Cup, but at this point in time, I'm looking to move overseas. Any inside scoops for us? No inside scoops, Amy. <laughs> Um, finally, how many million requests for tickets have you had for this weekend? Um, not too many. I feel like people know how limited tickets are, so they're pretty, they're pretty good about it. I have some family up here, so I'm just having my family come up and, and watch the match. Fantastic. Well, you've been incredible so far, and we appreciate your time. Thanks, Amy. Cheers. Did you enjoy that? There's so much more, so why not hit subscribe and download the Optus Sport app.